What's going on, guys? Way from Revolution here with Jeremiah. How are you, sir? Yeah, I'm good. Good to yeah. see you again, Wade. Excellent. Thank you very much. So, you know, you can see I'm dressed kind of thematically today. Yes. Right? Uh, I tell you, we didn't plan this. No, no, no. It, it's just, you know, it's a tutorial coincidence. Yeah. But the whole idea here is I'm dressed in kind of a style that uh, is reminiscent of the 1980s. Right? Okay. So I've got a, a suit on, but it's a, and it's a silk shantong uh, suit, but it's got thin lapels, right? Which kind of reminds me of the 80s when I was a teenager. And I've got an IWC uh, from the 1980s as well. So the gold model of the skinny engineer right. um, was made from 1987 to 1989. But this is a particularly interesting model because it happens to have a black dial on it that's stamped with the kanjar. Right? Yes. Which is That's a very the royal crest of the Omani family. Precisely, precisely. And this was actually a watch that um, the, at one point IWC had this legendary commercial director named Hannes Pantley. And this is one of the watches that he went and sort of organized to sell to the Omani oh, really? royal family. Yeah, exactly. And so these watches are legendary and he's a legend as well. But what I, I find very interesting about this watch is it's 34 mm in di diameter, right? And then with an integrated bracelet, I actually find it to be really beautiful on the wrist. And I think that that's a really nice transition point to the discussion about sizes and watches because I think IWC has been really smart about how they've been addressing sizing, right? So last year, of course, they did a new version of their big pilot, but it was less big. It was kind of a medium pilot. Right. And it was a watch that was super adaptable for a huge variety of wrists. Oh, that was 43, right? Yeah, exactly. And you know, what was really amazing to see on that watch was because of the integration of the strap into that, that case, um, which incidentally was a quick change system as well. You could, a man could wear it, a woman could wear it, people of any sort of size. Like that watch was um, like kind of to me more of an expression of like, you know, your style your character rather than you know anything related to size related to gender related to even generation as well young people could wear it older people could wear it i mean it just looked cool right so now iwc has been addressing this related to its complicated watches but with a watch that i happen to love called the portofino and and i think portofino refers to the italian riviera right the small town in the italian riviera on the northwest of italy ah, right very good. the coast no i haven't been okay. <laughs> i've had the Someday. opportunity to go and it is it's really charming and and you know uh, when you talk about the italian Riviera, you talk about this wonderful kind of sartorial style, like, you know, the elegance of like uh, of the rakish kind of dude mm -hmm. and the type of watch that he would wear. So I think IWC has really beautifully translated, you know, that whole image, that whole essence into the Portofino line. But they've done it now in watches that I find are really intriguing because they've now given us two watches um, that are complicated, but in much more wearable sizes, and also a pointer gate watch as well, which is also, to me, in the absolute perfect size as well. So let's start with a watch which I can compare to the watch that's on your wrist, okay. which is the new Portofino Perpetual Calendar. Right, what I have on is a 42 millimeter Portuguese uh, Perpetual Calendar, and today we have the Portofino in 40 millimeters. So let's take a, a little moment to address the groundbreaking status of IWC related to perpetual calendars. So if I can borrow the watches on your wrist for a moment. Sure. What's great about IWC is thanks to a genius named Kurt Klaus. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, they had the world's first synchronized perpetual calendar where all the information could be controlled through one crown. Yeah, right? th uh, that was the Da Vinci reference 3750 in uh, 1985. That's exactly right. So the amazing thing about that is that previous to this, if you want to adjust your perpetual calendar, you had a series of pushers throughout the case band and you Correct. basically had to go find you know, your pusher. Yeah. Actually, most people I use a toothpick. Yeah. I use a toothpick. Me too. Exactly. So most people will get a toothpick and then they start operating. So you don't scratch the Exactly. Piece, yeah. But the wonderful thing about Kurt Klaus's like brilliance was that he was like, why should we do that? Why can't we synchronize all of the indications through the crown? And that's precisely what he did. Right. You know? So in the original version of the Da Vinci and also through the perpetual calendars that were made um, uh, there in the first generation, there was a indication of the year as well, a four digit indication yes. of the year. Now they changed that when they went to the 42 mm uh, Portuguese perpetual calendar and instead you have a single dot that shows you the leap year and you no longer have that to keep the dial a little bit cleaner yeah. as well and to create an immediate distinction between the larger size perpetual calendars as you would find for example on the big pilot perpetual calendar which also has an incredible double hemisphere moon space mm -hmm. display right yeah uh, and what you see here but he, and, and you know honestly like I think that the size of this watch is really good, right? Like at 42 mm and about 13 mm in terms of thickness, yeah. it's got a great presence on the wrist, it's got great visibility. I think for a perpetual calendar, the sweet spot is between 40 to 42. Any smaller and you know, it, it's quite hard to read the calendar functions. Absolutely. Yeah. But now, IWC has introduced a watch that is just the epitome of elegance 
uh, this sort of Riviera style, but with that same perpetual calendar mechanism. And reminiscent of the original Da Vinci. Ab in a way. Absolutely. So what I love about this new watch is that it's got a very beautiful styling in terms of having like the minimum bezel conceivable. <laughs> and then you've got this glass box sapphire crystal that projects over the dial so much so that you actually feel like you could touch the indexes yes. in the hands. And what you have is this beautiful expansive dial which gives you maximum legibility, but in a case that's just 40 mm in terms of diameter. Yeah. And that is a real revelation for an IWC perpetual calendar. So I want you to put this on your wrist okay. and you tell me what you think. I'll, I'll put yours on. How long have you had this for here, Uh I'm not sure. I can't recall. <laughs> it's a fantastic watch. So when you look at me wearing this 42mm perpetual calendar, the Portuguese model, of course, it's to me a brilliant size and you know really beautifully balanced, incredibly visible, but it's, it's a pretty substantial watch. Like it happens to be that I have a pretty strong personality, I guess you could say, so it, it kind of suits me, right? But at the same time, there may be, there may be people who uh, from a mood perspective, from a personality perspective, want a really beautiful and slightly more understated and classic watch, and that's exactly what that is. Yeah, I think this is slightly thinner at 12.7 millimeters in thickness. I think that's about 13 or maybe slightly more than that, but it's, it's balance is proportional. You know, they made it feel even thinner. If you look at the profile of the watch, you exactly. can see like the top third of that watch basically comprises the sapphire crystal. Right. So like the illusion that you get from that watch is it's actually really thin Absolutely. on the wrist, yeah. you know, which I think is really a smart thing from the design team. Well done, Christian Knup. Uh, I think the movement in the uh, Portofi the new Portofino perpetual calendar is the caliber 82650. And I think what's interesting, one technical aspect that's really interesting is the very high accuracy moon phase. So the deviation of this is one day in 577.5 years. Wow. In, in the industry, I think what you consider as a high accuracy moon phase is a deviation of one day in 122.5. So this is about four times the accuracy. That's, that's yeah. the deviation from my Debithune. Really? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's go from there to a watch that also gives you a wonderful array. Of, no, but leave it on your wrist because we'll okay. do a direct, direct comparison. And that is the IWC Complete Calendar. So it gives you basically the same information that you have on a perpetual calendar, but it's not synchronized in the same way. However, it gives you wonderful uh, legible information and the fact that uh, the steel version of this watch is 9,900 Swiss francs as opposed to 22,000 Swiss francs, which is the price of the steel version of the yes, perpetual exactly. calendar, is you get a watch that is certainly complicated, Definitely uh, full of useful information, beautifully arrayed, and also, from my perspective, quite a great value proposition. This is also the first time the complete calendar complication is coming to the Portofino collection. So what I think is really nice about this watch is the way in which the information has been arrayed, right? So you have the integration at the sub-dial at 6 o'clock of the month and the mm -hmm. date, and then you have this very beautiful balanced subdial at 12 o'clock, which shows the moon face and also the day as well. Yeah, right? it's a very unusual layout. You don't really see this layout in, in other brands. No, you don't. Really, yeah. But it's, if you're looking at it, it's actually really intuitive to read. Yeah. Okay, so I want you to put this on your wrist and give me your reflections on it. Do the right one. So yeah. Jeremiah, give us your reflections on the uh, complete calendar versus the perpetual calendar, which is also incidentally one mm larger, right? That's forty-one. As yeah, you can 40. You, you can barely tell the difference. And we were talking about the box sapphire crystal, you know, taking about a third of the thickness. It feels almost the same. Obviously, there are less sub dials here, so the dial actually appears even larger in uh, in concert with the the enlarged size. And you know, I think it's just a completely different feel between rose gold. Stainless steel. Unfortunately, we don't have the rose gold perpetual calendar to do a comparison. Yeah, but you know, if we were to do a comparison of like price to price for the steel perpetual calendar versus the steel complete calendar, again, it's the complete calendar is less than half of that as well. Yeah. So it is. It kind of depends. You know, guess, uh, your budget, probably your journey as a watch collector as well. Correct. If you're at that point in your kind of watch collecting journey where you're yeah. interested to get a perpetual calendar, and incidentally, if you are at twenty two thousand Swiss francs for the world's first synchronized perpetual calendar. It's actually a pretty good value proposition good. I agree. as well. Right? I yeah. completely agree. So with the complete calendar, you can see there are two pushes on the left side of the case, clearly because you have to adjust the functions. You know, it doesn't factor in the, the same way as, as the perpetual. Very well executed. Very beautiful watches. Okay. So uh, since you're double wristing, I'm going to go to this okay. one as well. So now we have a watch which is 39 mm in terms of diameter, and it is the new Portofino with the pointer date. And you know, first of all, I'd just like to remark, like I love the fact that IB IWC has gone to calf straps, right? Yeah. Like it's funny to me because in the past, like pretty much everyone used to always put their watches on alligator straps. And what's the first thing that a watch collector does? 
switch the strap. It switches it to a cap strap. <laughs> yeah, so. no, I mean, nothing against the straps from IWC, but you know. No, no, it's or, or the entire industry. Yeah. Like, we appreciate the fact that in the past you've given us alligator straps. But it's cool also that it's, you know, and I like the fact that IWC is clearly a forward thinking brand that they mm -hmm. moved to these cast straps because I know every single collector that I am friends with will immediately take their alligator strap off, place it somewhere, you know, where they'll probably forget for about safe it. Keeping, but for <laughs> safekeeping, right? Exactly, and then they'll put a, a cow strap kind of like this on as well. And so I love these sort of matte textured cow straps. I think they're really beautiful and very modern. So let's go to the watch. 39 mm, pointer date at six o'clock. Um, again, this beautiful sort of design, which is incredibly clean, has this, a little bit of an Italian flair to it. Uh, wonderfully thin bezel, almost like bezel-less, I would say, mm -hmm. with this box sapphire crystal, and then the thin lugs as well. Just makes it a really, really elegant watch. Yeah, the combination or contrast between the gold, you know, hands and uh, our markers, you know, the dial furniture. It pops off the silver dial as well. I think it's something that also people forget to talk about when it comes to IWC is actually the value proposition that these watches represent. Now, we went through the prices of, of the perpetual calendar and the complete calendar, but Jeremiah, how much is this watch? Uh, 5,400 Swiss francs. So at 5,400 Swiss francs, uh, I mean, honestly, like an iconic model from a famous you know brand like IWC with uh, the kind of quality that they're reputed for, it's a pretty good proposition, man. Yeah, I completely agree. So Which one you pick the way? Uh, definitely a perpetual calendar. Okay. Like as soon as I saw that watch from across the room, right. I was like, "Dude, that's amazing!" Because I love um, Kirk Class's as perpetual calendar, and I yeah. feel like every single proper watch collector needs right. to have an IWC perpetual calendar. Yeah, right. it, it's a significant part of watchmaking yeah. history. Actually, like I think my very first perpetual calendar was um, uh, the old GST, like so. The, oh, really? Yeah, okay. you know the titanium one with the black and yellow dial, but it, it was a perpetual calendar, right. and. And to see that now in a case size that's so wearable, that's mm -hmm. so elegant. And, and see, readable. And readable, dude, that's phenomenal. So well done, IB, uh, WC. We like all the watches, but I, in particular, like that perpetual calendar. I think we're in agreement here. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Uh -huh.